Axé. 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 And Grand Rising. A grand day. To you all once again, my very beautiful people. Welcome. You don't know it is I, the mystic philosopher. Along with my chirping bird sounds in the background accompanying me as I attempt to share with you via this live broadcast and I hope it's it's live it would be my first time going live on this thing here live broadcast another of my thought to share with you another of my thought provoking perspectives and yes my people it is high time for us to be asking real and practical questions. It is high time for us to be seeking honest, truthful and factual answers. Yes, it is high time. It is high time for reason. And for reasoning, yes, my dearly beloved people, the world over, it is high time for us to come together and let us reason. It is high time, and yes, believe it or not, but this might be the last chance and the last and only time that we may now have to freely express ourselves and to share our ideas publicly and on forums like this. Now please bear in mind at all times that this is the systems and its elites media platforms. And simply because of who and what they are, we'll talk about who and what they are later, more about them. Because of who and what they are. They can and they will censor. They will silence. And cut us off. Or even cut me off at any time. Or at their. Without their pleasure. Or their displeasure. So it is high time. For us to speak up. And for us to speak out. Yes, it is high time for us to speak up and it is high time for us to, to speak out. It is high time for us to project truth and our feelings. <coughs> Sorry, it is high time for us to speak truth and facts to the power that is. But it is not. And it cannot be, but at a later time I will explain that to most of you who don't understand, understand and understand what I've just said. Yes, my beloved people, it is high time for us to know ourselves collectively, personally and individually. It is high time for us to know ourselves and above all, it is high time for us to know our enemies and who and what they really and truly are. It is high time for us to know our enemies and to know who <coughs> and what they truly are. One of my favorite quotes, and for those of you who have been listening to me over the years, no by now that one of my favorite quotes as it relates to knowing oneself is that of Sun Tzu who is Sun Tzu he is the Asian Chinese general um, military strategist uh, writer philosopher and author of the very famous and intriguing book called The Art of War a book I recommend that everyone read all of you, my people. 
should read the, the art of war. And I quote from the art of war. Sun Tzu said, and I quote, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gain, you will also suffer a defeat. Now, if you know neither the enemy nor yourself, talk to me somebody, you will succumb in every battle. You'll be a loser. Unquote. <coughs> Sun Tzu, the art of war. So from this quote, from the art of war, there are at least seven very important points that as the mystic philosopher, I must highlight and point out here and hopefully have us all in agreement and also on one accord throughout the rest of this discourse. First point or point number one. Let me remind you, or enlighten you, or awake you to the fact that we have an enemy. And by extension, we have some enemies. The second point, which is point number two, we, let me remind you that we that are awakened to the fact that we have an enemy, and again, by extension, some enemies. We must now sensibly and logically interpret, understand, understand, and overstand, and conclude that we are at war. And that we are in a war. And that the enemy, and by extension, our enemies are battling for the control of our thoughts. The control of our minds, the control of our souls, and to be even more precise, our enemies are battling not only to control our thoughts, our mind, and our souls, which is spiritual essence, to control the spiritual essence of who and what we are in this realm, on this side of reality as humans. But they are warring and literally campaigning. They are literally warring and campaigning to literally own them as well. Yes, meaning they are campaigning and warring to own our thoughts, to own our minds and our souls. Wake up, my people, for those of you who have really been... <laughs> Dead. The third point that I must highlight here, point number three, is that it is imperative that we know our enemy. And by extension, it is imperative that we know all our enemies. Here again, and for example, for, for emphasis, I would like to share with you another of my favorite quotes, this time from the Adamic Race History and Holy Book that is commonly known as the Christian Holy Bible. And I quote, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And this is according to Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Now according to the Strong's Concordance, this is some information here, according to the Strong's Concordance, the original Hebrew word that was used in this passage of scripture is the Hebrew word damar, D-A-M-A-H. This is not my language, so um, for those of you who know the language, if my pronunciation isn't accurate, again, I'm not apologizing. I'm just reminding you that this is not my language. Dama. Which, when translated into English, means, and I quote, to cut off, to cease, to perish, to bring to silence, to liken, to undone, um, utterly cut, to utterly cut down. The evidence shows, and the evidence will continue to show that you, my people, and people in general, the world over, are cut off, are perishing, are being silenced, and are being exterminated, and are being destroyed, you name it. 
all because of all because they lack knowledge all because of the lack of knowledge or more precisely they because our B lack black knowledge B lack knowledge yes all that is going on right now is because of the lack of knowledge right people are perishing I could do a whole talk I've done it already but this is very interesting lack of knowledge when you ask the question why are people so behaving the way they are and why are all these things being done to us and our people because of lack of knowledge any form of perishing is because of lack of knowledge anyway let me get back to my prepared notes so from this we may logically and sensibly conclude and affirm that there is no substitute for knowledge or to be even more precise or to be even more accurate there is no substitute for knowledge that is beneficial to us and that knowledge is the only key to our success and victory over our enemies over all our enemies there's no substitute for, for knowledge there's no substitute for knowledge you can believe all you want but there's a difference between belief and knowing there's no substitute for knowledge so seek to know once we know we will understand who and what our enemies are anyway the fourth point point number four that I would like to point out and highlight here we must know them individually collectively nationally politically racially religiously spiritually and otherwise yes we must know our enemies in all of these sense if you will point number five and not only should we know them and know everything that we possibly can about them but that we should unceasingly that we should unceasingly never stop we should unceasingly see them and unceasingly treat them as enemy and as the enemies that they are to us never you let down your guard a devil is 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 a devil and can't change Anyhow, talk about that already. Let me not stray. Hey, hey. Point number six. That I must highlight here that it is imperative that we know, that we understand, that we understand and that we understand this fact that the greatest weapon that is, or that the greatest weapon that there is on this side of reality and the one that can be used and the one that is being used against us Yes, the one that is being used effectively to effectively control us, to effectively subjugate us, to effectively defeat us is a thing called fear. The weapon also known as fear. The weapon of fear. And point number seven, finally, and this is finally for now. If we know ourselves, the operative word here is if if we know ourselves or when we know ourselves if we know who and what we really and truly are along with the all the aforementioned or along with the aforementioned six points or if you will uh, six things or six criteria that i have pointed out and highlighted here then we will have conquered fear and by conquering fear Victory over all our enemies will be ours. Victory over all our enemies is assured. Now, the first question that I think that most of you, if not all of you, my mentally activated and intelligent-minded truth seekers, viewers and listeners will ask, or possibly you're asking at this time, is why? Why am I... Um, doing this broadcast or you know where and possibly a broadcast that possibly um, the whole world may see and hear <laughs> I wish all of my people would see and hear this why are you doing why are you the mystic philosopher you may be asking a question why are you the mystic philosopher doing this live broadcast 
and posting this and all the other videos and presentations, songs, semi dub poetry, etc. Online. Why are you doing that? Why are you exposing yourself? A man says preambled with the fact that from idealistic philosopher's perspective, I honestly think, believe, and also know of a fact, and can also prove as a matter of fact that this planet called Earth and possible this plane, this realm, this dimension of existence, if you will, also known as this reality, as we think we know it, is a prison. It is a prison planet. Some call it hell and earth. And possibly a prison realm. Might be a prison realm where we are existing in at this time. A prison dimension or a prison plane. All well, these are metaphysical and philosophical topics that have explained and dealt with elsewhere. Some of you that are seriously thinking about me saying that the earth is a prison planet might be saying to yourself that I don't know what I'm talking about by calling the earth a prison. Because by definition, a prison is a place, and in some cases, a prison is a building where people are held in confinement and as a punishment for crimes that they have committed. And am I implying that all of us here have committed crimes elsewhere and are sent here as punishment? And my answer to that question and comment is possibly not. Possibly not. All of us might not have committed a crime or some crimes. And just like the system's prisons, some of us might be just innocent victims that were wrongly and maliciously charged and wrongly and maliciously convicted and are sent are held here. For example, just think about, just think for a moment, of all the possible reasons other than guilt that have a lot of us or that have a lot of innocent people in the system's prison or the system's prisons all across this planet. And also, for those of you that have been watching and listening um, to me speak over the past at least 15 years, you must have heard me say from time to time that this, our planet, have been invaded. Yes, that this, our planet, have been invaded and that this, our planet, is currently occupied by the invaders and that we, the original and natural native earthly humans, we, the Earth's organic humans, have been conquered. You might have heard me say that if you listen to any of my videos, earlier videos. That we have been conquered. That we have been, we, the original people, have been conquered, subjugated, humiliated, and that we are being made their slaves. And their prisoners. Now, maybe it was not so originally. Meaning, maybe it was not a prison planet originally. And maybe it was not meant to be so either. And maybe it will not always be so. I don't know. Or maybe I just saw the thing set. And there is just nothing that we can do about it. But the fact is that currently it is a prison. In fact, to quote one of my childhood um, friend, Mr. John Roberts, a.k.a. Junior. He said that this planet is a mental institution. A madhouse if you will, that is stuck in space and floating around in space, or that, we are all, and that, or that we are all stuck here in space on this planet. And from my perspective, most of us, if not all of us, are held as subjects, captives, slaves, victims, and prisoners here. We are imprisoned here. And there are many layers and segregations and degrees of punishment to in and on this prison planet or those have dealt with elsewhere and as you shall no doubt shortly see and hopefully agree with me that 
the invaders, the conquerors <clears throat> and rulers, etc., that are running, that are governing this planet are not humans. But they are demons. They are devils. And humankind, also known as they are a kind of human. They are not like us. They are not native to the planet. They are not original from the planet. But that again won't stray, but I have dealt with that. But the fact is that they are not real human. And that is why we are living in hell. They are devils giving us hell. Can you imagine for millions of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, we have existed and coexisted in a symbiotic another relationship with all natural things and life and life forms that are native to the planet until the invaders and the alien them come. But <clears throat> that's also another topic. And I've dealt with it elsewhere, but just think about that. Just ask yourself these questions, my people. Why are there so many, are so much um, unnecessary wars? Why are there so many unnecessary murders, injustices, hunger, starvation, corruption, abuse, brutality, isms? Why are there so much isms and schisms? You name it or you name them. Just ask yourself, why? If these were humans that are running the planet, like us, the original people that are native to the planet, ask yourself why. Just think for a moment and get caught up with their systems, training, and education. Just think naturally for a moment. It is because it is demon. My answer to that question, and you may come to the same conclusion in the same summary and affirmation, that it is because it is demons, devils. Evil humankind or the evil kind of human that are governing and ruling over us. We are the subjects of devils that subjugate us. And from my perspective, for those of us that are awakened and enlightened to these facts and to this realization, our primary goal and intention are to be free. To be set free. I will to be free. And I will be free. So I'm doing this live broadcast. Or however you may receive this discourse. I am doing this. And all these postings. Um, these videos and songs etc. In order to share some of my perspectives. And insights on these facts. Hopefully to comfort. And encourage others. Other fellow prisoners, while hopefully contributing, or should I say attributing, to the planned mass prison break from here. Yes, there's a planned mass prison break from here, from this realm, from this dimension, and from this plane, and from under this spell, the evil spell of these demons that are governing and controlling and is ruling over us and trying to take over our minds, our souls, and our essence of who and what we are. So, today, I will again use as an allegory another story, and this time a Bible story, and hopefully, and I hope that most of you that are watching or listening will correctly interpret the messages and lessons that I think are encoded therein. Now the title of this my talk or this discourse and this um, however you receive it whether by live or however because as I tell you this is the, 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 the systems platform so they can interrupt, cut you off do whatever sense or do whatever with you. These are devils. I always remember that. So the title of this on this live hopefully is King Nebuchadnezzar, another perspective, the mystic philosopher. The title, King Nebuchadnezzar, another perspective, the mystic philosopher. And the subtitle, if you will, is choose this day whom you will serve or choose this day who will serve you. 
And the story that I will borrow and use as an allegory in this, my sincere attempt to express and to add emphasis to what I most honestly and sincerely think is a very important point at this very crucial time in our lives, in our story, not his story, in our story, and in our humanity, especially if you are a natural native earthly human, or if you are one of the humankind, then this will apply to you. Especially if you are a natural native earthly human with high melanin or high carbon skin complexion. And please note that I did not say, especially if you are black, be black, that I cover elsewhere. So this is taken from the Adamic race history and holy book again, commonly called the Christian Holy Bible according to Daniel chapter 3. And I will read from verse um, from verse 1 to 30, the entire chapter, I think. It is a story about a very notorious king of ancient Babylon named Nebuchadnezzar. And his encounter with and his encounter and his very rude awakening with three Hebrew men that would not bow or worship his God. Three righteous men or three righteous humans that did not bow or surrender to him or to his immoral and his satanic decree. Now let's talk a little about a king and who is a king and by extension a queen and who is a queen. Because from my perspective, there are many misconceptions. There are many misinterpretations. There are many ignorant and er uh, erroneous ideologies, doctrines and beliefs. Numerous false claims and false statements that are made and are being made about the word king and the word queen by my own people. By some of you, my own people. Thereby giving our enemies more ammunition to call us imbeciles. And to label us black, be lack, be lack of knowledge and of self, you name it. However, please let me hasten to add that some of these many misconceptions, misinterpretations, these ignorant and erroneous ideologies, doctrines and beliefs, numerous false claims and false statements that are made and are being made by some of our own melanin people about the word king, and the word queen are due to the fact that this is not our language. This is not our mother tongue. This is the invaders. This is our invaders, colonizers, occupiers, and oppressors language. And the record will show that I, the mystic philosopher, had already dealt with this fact exhaustively, exhaustively elsewhere. A king is the most powerful man, the supreme ruler, the lord, the god of an independent state, country, nation, or territory. And likewise, a queen is the most powerful woman, the supreme ruler, uh, the lord, the goddess of an independent state, country, nation, ter or territory, etc., so please, for the sake of basic human intelligence and activated common sense, not just common sense, but common means everybody has it. But when it's activated, it's a different thing. So for the sake of basic human intelligence and activated common sense, my people, if you are not the most powerful man or woman, if you are not the supreme ruler, the, the sovereign ruler, the lord, uh, the god or goddess of an independent state, country, nation or territory, etc. Please stop calling yourselves king and queens. If at all you have a passport, the fact is, if at all you have a passport, a citizenship card, if at all you are a citizen or a civilian, a national, a subject of a country, or a state, etc., then please stop calling yourselves king and queens. Because it is nonsensical to do so. And please stop boasting and telling people that prior to us Africans and melanated people being invaded, prior to us being overrun and occupied, 
prior to us being traded and enslaved, that we were all kings and queens. That's nonsense. Because not only is it non, not only is this statement nonsensical and illogical, impractical and untrue, but it is it also make our enemies continue to laugh at us because of our ignorance of how they mentally colonize our minds with their language and our ignorance of and our ignorance thereof. Now, the world is made up of many independent states, countries, nations, and territories, etc. Example, according to worldatlas.com, and I quote, there are 194 universally recognized countries in the world, of which 193 are members of the United Nations, plus the Vatican, which is known as the Holy See, um, plus those plus the Vatican and the Holy See. Now, it continues, it said places like Palestine, Kosovo, and Taiwan are partially recognized, which increase the count, unquote. So here we see 194 recognized. So if you should add the Vatican, which is the Holy See, and um, Palestine and Taiwan, you're, you're looking to at least 147, right? Recognized territory. And as such, there are many kings and queens, rulers. Uh, there are many que um, kings and queens or many rulers in the world. There are many kingdoms and queendoms, for your information, Kingdom is the king's domain, theme territory, domain territory. Same thing with the queen dome, dominion. The, that is where he had supreme rulership over. So there are many kingdoms and queendoms in the world. However, the record and the evidence have shown and will continue to show that there is a king that is, there's a king of this world, or if you will, a king of this earth, a.k.a. the king of kings. In other words, there is a king also known as a supreme ruler or a god, if you will, that is above all kings and queens, above all rulers, governors, and gods of this earth or of this world. World and earth. That's what we're talking about. When I use the word world, earth. And I must regretfully inform all of you, my Rastafarian Brethren, and likewise all of you, my Christian brethren, and all others to whom it may concern, that from my domestic philosopher's perspective, coupled with my everyday observations, experience, and reality, he, meaning this supreme ruler, is not his imperial majesty, his lassie, is or was not, and nor is he, Jesus Christ, a.k.a. Yahushua Mashiach. In other words, from my domestic philosopher's perspective, the king, a.k.a. the supreme ruler of this world, of this earth, is not his imperial majesty, Yesilasia, nor is he Jesus Christ, also known as Yahushua. But the king of this world, or the king, the guy who has supreme power over this earth, meaning the most powerful man, the sovereign ruler, the most powerful entity of this world, or of this earth, is the alien, listen carefully now, and a Jesus Christ and a Yahshua or any other body you want to ascribe that to. But it is the alien interplanetary invader, conqueror, and occupier, the entity or the spirit called Satan the devil. It is Satan the devil, along with his host. Jota get dry. <clears throat> along with his host of devils. Yes, along with his host, city Satan the devil, along with his host of devils, and their hand picked, listen carefully now, mind picked, brain picked, and race picked elite group of humankind that run things here on this planet called Earth. Yes, humankind, and even though some of them may start out as human or were human. He, Satan the devil, has created them in his own image. Make them a kind of human now. That's why when you see some people who you used to roll with and when they became in the systems and promoted in the system and get certain authority, 
They don't even know you. They don't treat you like they, you, you wonder what goes what wrong because they are now made in the devil's image. But <laughs> listen, man, let me let me continue. And just to offer some more proof to this fact, according to the Adamic race history and holy book, of, also known as the Christian Holy Bible, the entity or the man called Jesus Christ himself referred to him or referred to Satan, the devil. As the ruler of this world, and I say something, and I mean, the philosopher says something I can use. I think so, I know so. But let's use something that you are familiar with that you consider to be your holy book as proof. Jesus Christ says Satan is the ruler of the world. See John, um, according to the Christian Holy Bible, see John 12 and verse 31. And according to the New Living Translation, let me quote from it for those of you who can refer to it right now. And I quote, the time for judging this world has come when Satan, the ruler of this world, can't talk to me somebody, will be cast out. And the apostle, Paul, I call him, Satan the devil, the prince of the power of the air. I can't see Ephesians 2 and verse 2, King James Version. We're in, in, let me quote for you, we're in, in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. Yes. Once he made them into their, his own image. That's why you find a lot of people, some of them your own relatives, my own relatives, and people I know, my own kind, some look like me. Why do you think them behave so? Why do you think them treat us so? Why do you think them abuse us so? Because they are now made in the image of Satan the devil. But anyway, let me not too stray. That's why I like to prepare my material. Because there's so much things I would like to say. Yes. So. And. Um, let's, let's, let's get back here. The spirit that now worketh in the children of this being. And also. The God. The apostle Paul himself again referred to Satan the devil as being what? The God of this world. The God of this earth. It's not Jesus Christ. It's not Jesus Christ. It's not many of the other prophets and, and people that some of us believe. Right now around things, yes sir. Right? It said, see if you see um, Corinthians 4 and verse 4. It tells you. John makes a further distinction. When he says, we know, and I quote, we know that we are of God. And the whole world is in the power of the evil one. We know that of a fact. The whole world is in the whole earth is under the influence of Satan and the devil. And all of them we see are carry out all these evils. Right? Even though some from among us, some, of, some come from the same womb that you and I came from. Same lineage. I know you see them you say, what gone wrong? It's because Satan has now created them in their own image. And that's why they'll do evil. Uh, you know, let me get back. Let me continue. Yes. So we know that we are of God. And the whole world is in the power of the evil one. First John 5 and verse 19. And again we read in the book of Matthew 4 and verse 8 to 9. And again I quote. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all him meaning Jesus Christ. All the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give to you, he said. Satan talking to Jesus now, come to the book. You know. Please interpret it for what it is. He said, all this I will give to you if you will bow down and worship me. So he said, if you want riches and fame and all of that, if you not serve Satan, you now will get it. If at that you hunger and thirst for, to be like those that are oppressing us. But let me not stray again, mistake. And again, we read in Luke, that was in Matthew 4 and verse 8 to 9. Check it in your, in your, your book yourself. And again, we read in Luke 4 and verse um, 5 to 7. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms. Remember I tell you that? There are many kingdoms and queendoms. All the kingdoms of the world or all the kingdoms of the earth in a moment of time. And said to him, to you I will give all this authority and their glory. So all you are hunger and thirst for riches and power and fame. That's why I mean I didn't mean, no, no, no. For if, he said, to you I will give all this authority and their glory. For it has been delivered to me. 
and I will give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Unquote. No, I, I, hope, I get the message. You did this, you know. I don't have time. For, 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 I'm just recording and trying to do this. I don't know how long it will last. But anyway, let me quit. So please interpret it for what it is. So now that you know who is the king and by extension who is a queen. Now that you know who is a king and who is a queen. And that Satan the devil is the king of the earth. The kings of all kings. And that it is he, Satan the devil, along with his subordinates. Along with his subordinates, his elites. And his one percenters, his ultra rich, you name them. His host of devils, his administrators, his agents of force and forces, his hand picked. <laughs> you think you just get that Satan circle by him, no hand pick you, him and the devil, him no hand pick you. you. You stay there. Right? You think I just say, go? So, along with his hand picked, his brain picked, his mind picked, and his race picked, don't forget that. Group of humankind, I tell you, they're not human like us, they're human, they're kind of human. Now you know that it is them that run things here on this planet, on this earth. Let us talk a bit about this king called Nebuchadnezzar in much more detail. Who was the king Nebuchadnezzar? Now according to one Google search, he was the most powerful king and the longest reigning ruler of the ancient Babylonian empire. He ruled the empire for some 43 years. And he is figured or mentioned prominently in three books of the Adamic race history and Holy Bible. Uh, and Holy Book, aka the Christian Holy Bible. Namely, in the book of Jeremiah, in the book of Ezekiel and Daniel. He was also a very feared king that was well known for his military might. He, along with his Babylonian empire, were what today we would call a superior power. If not the superior power and the most powerful man in the world. You see some people but the most powerful man in the world. <laughs> anyway, you can interpret that. And as you shall know though shortly see. No one dared to disobey his orders or his decrees. Those who did would be severely and mercilessly punished. And even been put to death. Now from my perspective, King Nebuchadnezzar, along with his reign and his empire, his kingdom, etc., are both analogous and synonymous to the kings and queens, um, the kingdoms and kingdom, uh, uh, and queendoms, uh, the prime ministers, the dictators, the religious and political leaders, the governments, etc., etc., of this earth today. And also from my perspective, King Nebuchadnezzar is, is analogous and synonymous to Satan, the devil, who is the chief empire. Of the world himself. That I have just explained. King Nebuchadnezzar. Was a world power. And possibly the, supre the superior. World power. Just think of the ne King Nebuchadnezzar. You have today. King Nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom. Was the one world order. Or the old world order. That according to verse 7. Which we shall look into shortly. Of Daniel um, chapter 3. All the nations of and peoples of every language were his subjects that were all in humble adoration and obedience to his decrees, to his regulations, to his um, state of emergency, <laughs> and to his emergency order, etc., etc. And by falling down and worship the image of gold, the unnatural God, if you will, that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So I ask that you please bear these facts in mind. As I now read from Daniel chapter 3. And I will most certainly be getting back to these uh, facts shortly. In order to cement my points. And hopefully expose some of the, the lies. The unfaithfulness and the hypocrisies of some of you Christians. Some of you theist. Some of you believers. Not all but some of you. Yes. Believers, Christians, theist. And other religious and like-minded people. Now let's go to Daniel chapter 3. And I quote King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold. Six cubits high and six cubits wide. Now just for your information let me pause here. Six cubits just to get a, a picture. A visual picture of it. That is about, six, that's about 90 feet high. And 9 feet 
um, wide or about 27 meters high and 2.7 meters wide. So he made this image and set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. He then summoned his, the, the satraps, and again for your information, who is a satrap? A satrap was a, a, a provincial governor in the ancient um, Persian Empire. A satrap is also a subordinate or a local ruler. So he summoned his satrap, his prefects, his governors, his advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the advisors, um, the treasurers, the, the judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, Nations and peoples of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, um, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Whosoever or whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the harp, Right, the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyric, uh, the harp, and all kinds of music. All the nations and, the, and peoples of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May, may the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that Everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whosoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into the blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set up over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, larry, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? What a very audacious man. Anyway. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him and he said, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty respectfully, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes, their trousers, their turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king command was so urgent that the furnace so hot, so, and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers 
who took shed who took up shed rap mishak and abednego and these three men firmly tied fell into the blazing the blazing furnace then king nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors were there three men that were that we tied up and threw into the fire they replied certainly your majesty he said look i see four men walking around in the fern in the fire unbound and unharmed and the fourth looks like a son of god or a son of the gods nebuchadnezzar then approached the open the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted shadrach meshach and abednego servants of the most high god come out come here so shadrach meshach and abednego came out of the fire and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. Around them, they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair on their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire. Not even smell of fire upon them. On them, sorry. Then Nebuchadnezzar, then Nebuchadnezzar said, "Praise be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego." Who has sent his angel and rescued his servants? They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be put, be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble for no other god can serve can save in this way then the king promised or rather then the king promoted shedrach meshach and Omengo in the province of babylon unquote my people i ask that you see king nebuchadnezzar as being analogous to the government or to our governments and heads of governments and as all of the aforementioned so-called leaders that make the rules make the laws and order that we keep them emergency orders you name them i ask that you please see the golden image and the golden statue the unnatural god if you will as being analogous and synonymous to the covid 19 experimental emergency vaccine and vaccines i ask that you please do i ask that you please see the satraps the prefects the governors the advisors the treasurers the judges the magistrates and all the other provincial officials as being analogous to the aforementioned elites to the bill gates to the premiers to the the, the prime ministers, the MPs, the governors, to the mayors, to the ministers, the priests and, and, and church pastors, to the systems doctors, to the systems vets and veterinarians, to the nurses, to the pharmaceutical, big ph to, to all the pharmacists and to big pharma. Yes, the pharmaceutical companies. The freedom has been to the front uh, analogous and synonymous to the frontline workers. The informers, aka the snitches. To the agents of force and forces, also known as the law enforcers, the police officers, and the soldiers, etc., etc. All those that are hand picked, brain picked, mind picked, and race picked to administer the vaccines to the herd in their quest to achieve herd immunity. Please note herd animal immunity, not human immunity. My people, isn't it ironic that etymologically <coughs> the very word vaccines respectfully had nothing to do with humans but only to do with animals, cows to be exact. Check it out for yourself. Do your search and then your research. And my people, isn't it ironic that etymologically the word heard respectfully had nothing to do with humans, but all to do with animals, to do with livestock, to be precise. 
I ask that you please see the three Hebrew men, namely Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as being analogous to those of us today, or to the remnant of us today, that have not willfully surrendered, and will not willfully surrender to Nebuchadnezzar, a.k.a. to the system, and to those of us that will not suspend or surrender our natural native earthly human rights and dignity, our natural basic human intelligence and our activated common sense and our ability to think and ask questions. Intelligent, to think and ask intelligent questions. Hard questions. Uncomfortable questions. Thought-provoking questions. And to seek correct answers in order to make informed decisions for ourselves. I ask that you please see the three Hebrew boys, or rather the three Hebrew men, namely Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as being analogous and synonymous to those of us today, or to the remnant of us today, that are courageous enough to choose, and will continue to choose to remain faithful to our God, to our source, to our ancestors, and to our belief systems, whomever or whatever we may conceive Believe or know him, she or it or them to be. Those of us that regardless of the consequences, favorable or not, that we remain faithful to our most honorable African ancestral God, gods and our source. Those of us that just like Shedrach, Meshach and Abednego will stand our ground. Those of us that will remain, that will mean, that those of us that will mean do and boldly say, King Nebuchadnezzar, or to whom it may concern, just the, 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 the gap, to whom it may concern, this may concern. We do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, so be it. The God will serve our better yet for us melanin people. The God who serve us, our most honorable African ancestors, God, gods and souls. Is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even, even if he does not, we want, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Your majesty, we will not take your job. Or your shot. I suggest that you stick it up where the sun don't shine. As mentioned earlier. In verse 8. At this time. I quote. At this time. Verse 8 of Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3 at this time some astrologers. Came forward and denounced the Jews. Unquote. I must also point out here. And remind you. That if or when you refuse to bow, you my people, if or when you refuse to bow to your enemy's God or gods, you will be publicly denounced. You will be publicly called evil. You will be publicly called traitors, selfish, inconsiderate, ignorant, illiterate. You will be publicly ridiculed, humiliated, intellectually assassinated. You will be sabotaged. You will be publicly called idiots. You will be publicly called an enemy of society, an enemy of the state. You'll be publicly called anti-vax. You name it or you name them and your enemies will do it or do them to you. And in this, and in this case, if or when or for whatever the reason or reasons you may choose not to take the COVID-19 emergency experimental vaccine or vaccines, please know, though this, that you will be publicly denounced you will be publicly called evil, traitors, selfish, inconsiderate, ignorant, illiterate. You will be publicly ridiculed, scoffed at, humiliated. You will be publicly intellectually assassinated. You will be sabotaged. You will even lose your job. You name it. You might even be publicly lynched. They will kill you. A devil them. Don't forget. A devil is a devil is a devil. And once they are made and carved in the image of the devil... A devil hurt them though. Don't forget that. Don't be fooled. But be cool. You name it or you name them. 
and your enemies will do it or they will do them to you or do them to us. In other words, please know thou this that taking a stance for what you personally think is right for you or for what you may believe is right for you and possibly what you know is right for your family can and will also cost you much. It's a high price to pay for righteousness or for your stand for standing your ground. It can or it might even cost you your life. In other words, Satan the devil and his Satan and his devils his hand pick, mind pick, race pick, you name it. Group of humankind. They will even force you from your physical body. No, don't be deceived. They can't kill you. That's why they're doing everything to control you and to own you. So they can force you from this physical body. They will do that. Yes, remember that. And why it is because it is Satan the devil who is the God, the king, the sovereign ruler of this world or of this earth he along with his host of other devils he along with his subordinates his elites his one percenters his host of devils his administrators his agents of force and forces his hand-picked brain-picked mind-picked and race-picked group of humankind now you know that it is them that run things here on this planet his chosen people his children yeah them run things and them run things here. And like father, like sons and daughters. Yeah, they are of their father, the devils. Yeah, they are all devils. Don't be deceived. Not that because they may be doing, they made some, they, a devil may do some good for you or to you or that which you perceive. Mean that <laughs> a devil is a devil is a devil. Okay, anyway. And as Jesus Christ himself is alleged to have said, you are of your father, the devil. Remember that, and you and and your and your will is to do your father's desires. They only can do Satan works, or else they can remain powerful and in the capacity that you see them. Don't be deceived. He was a murderer. <laughs> Think the man a murderer. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in truth. Because there is no truth in him. No, nor his people. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Unquote. That is according to um, what was that? John 8. Um, yes. I think it was verse 44. Let me repeat that. Let me quickly. Yes. Yeah. John 8 and verse 44. Right? Consequently. They will do because of who and what they are. They will do all manner of evil to you. Or all manner of evil to us because of who and what they are. Simply put, they are devils. A lot of people are getting excited. Why are, they, why are they saying this? Why are they doing this? Why are they so lie? Why are they on TV saying this and doing that? They can't help themselves. A devil. It's a devil. It's a devil. Don't be deceived. All when they jump in a river and save you. A devil. They have an agenda. Anyway. Consequently, you, you consider they will do all manner of evil to you. Yes, because of who and what they are. Simply put, they are devils. They are they are creatures that have no respect for our beloved mother nature. They are creatures without respect for humanity and human lives. You think them afraid? <laughs> These are creatures without conscience or souls. That they don't give a damn about you or about your humanity or about our humanity. They don't. Don't be deceived. Now the question I must, I would like to ask here is this. How many of you that are so-called believers in whichever or in whomever God are gods? How many of you that are prepared to say, mean and do this? Meaning that are prepared to that are prepared to take a stance for what you think, for what you know, or for what you believe is right for you. How many of you do that? You march like it's damn heard and doing things without even thinking. Now some of you have buyer's regrets. I don't feel a damn sorry for you. My own blood can drop dead when you do that which is wrong. You reap what you sow. 
Yeah. Some of you are calling yourselves God's witnesses. Jehovah's witnesses. Yahweh's witnesses. Allah's witnesses. And you're God's witnesses. You call yourself devotees, believers, followers, Christians, theists, Muslims, Jews, Hindus. You name it or you name them. But how many of you that if push comes to shove or when push comes to shove, how many of you will truly say, will truly mean and do like the aforementioned three Hebrew men, namely Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? If or when push comes to shove, how many of you that will not bow to the system's pressure or to peer pressure? How many of you are prepared to give up your system status, your system's political and religious fame and status, your, your friends? How many of you are prepared to give up your friends and your associates, your material wealth and possessions? You name it or you name them. How many of you that will not take the system's bribes how many of you are prepared to put everything on the line, including your life, and take a stance for that which you think, or for that which you believe, or that which you know is right for you, and your people, and your family, but personally first for you? Where is your so-called professed knowledge, of, uh, knowledge in God? Where is your so-called professed faith and trust in your God? People, tell me. Let me be very blunt, especially some of you, if not all of you hypocrites that are calling yourselves Christians and believers, etc. in the Bible. And especially if you are one that is professing that the Bible is the living word or the living and authentic word of your God. Well, according to your Bible, and I quote, your holy book, and I quote, Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in man and make it flesh his arm and whose heart depart from the Lord. Jeremiah 17 verse 5 that was the King James Version. Let me read it from the New International Versions again. This is what the Lord say. Curse is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Jeremiah 17 and verse 5, the New International Version. If you turn away from your God, if you turn away from your faith and faith in your and, and and the faith of your fathers and ancestors, fathers, mothers, and ancestors, if you turn away from your religious or your religious beliefs and practices and start believing and following the atheist system, these are devil's atheist systems, God and gods, and your atheist leaders, preachers, if you know how much atheists are preached to you know, just for our money. And fame and power and control over you. If you turn away from, yeah, and turn to these atheist leaders, preachers, politicians, these doctors, nurses, mass media journalists, oh my goodness, these, com these commentators and scientists, etc., then please no doubt this that you are already cursed and that you are a damn curse. If you turn away from your source and mother, and our beloved mother nature. And start to put your trust in COVID-19. In the COVID-19 experimental um, emergency vaccines. And their creators and all of these ad, 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 ad advisors and administrators. If, if, you, if that's where you're going to put your trust and your faith in. While, by turning away from your source. Or if you will, let's just for convenience sake. From your creator to these systems. You know, servants of you know who. Right? If you turn away from your source to this experimental thing, you are already cursed and you are a damn curse. Now, before I close, please let me also make a few points here. Very clearly here. I know in order not to be intentionally or otherwise misconstrued or misinterpreted or misunderstood or misquote, etc., Number one, point number one. As a natural native earthly human, I firmly believe in freedom of choice. Or to be even more correct and direct. I, the mystic philosopher, take a firm stance for choice. I, the mystic philosopher, firmly stand for choice. And so I think that every human, in particular everyone that is an adult 
and of sound mind should be both legally and above all he or she should morally have the right to choose not just legally but morally have the right to choose and should be morally given the right to choose what they, what he or she or what they think or may think, believe or know is right for themselves or for him or herself. He or she should have the right even to be stupid. No one should be encouraged, let alone be bribed, bullied, tricked, forced, con, convinced or coerced to do anything against their will. Therefore, if a person for whatever reason or reason chooses to bow to the God, the aka to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar, then their right should their, their, their right to choose should be respected by us all. And in the case of the COVID-19 experimental vaccines, if a person for whatever reason or reasons chooses to take it or to take them, then their right should you know, their right to choose should also be respected by us all. And the same respect should be to anyone and everyone who for whatever reason or reasons may choose not to bow to the systems God, aka to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. And any and everyone that for whatever reason, reason, reason or reasons may choose not to take the COVID-19 experimental vaccine or vaccines. They should also be afforded the same right, the same freedom and privilege, and the same respect. In fact, everyone should have the right even to be ignorant or to be stupid. Everyone should have the right to choose to obey or even to disobey their own God, let alone the God of his or her enemy and enemies and his or her oppressors. Whether they are ignorant or not of the consequences and regardless of the consequences. In closing, I will borrow another few verses of scriptures from the Adamic Race History and Holy Book and ask that you interpret it for yourselves. And I quote, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which, you, which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land he dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24 verse 15 and that was the King James Version. Please interpret it however you will. Until next time. If there is a next time, hey, we got go go on now, you don't know. Please let me say thanks very much for your time and for watching and listening to this, my discourse. Your critiques, your perspectives, your insights, your thoughts, your comments, your support, your feedback, in whatever respect, as well as your feed forward are welcome and encouraged. I am the mystic philosopher. Ashe! 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 Ayase!